Welcome back, everybody, to part two in our series where we are talking about the TD Ameritrade Streaming Data API. So last video was kind of just setting the stage, understanding kind of what we would need to make this API work. We read through some of the documentation to understand, you know, what we kind of had access to, what we needed to do, all sorts of fun stuff like that, and the endpoints we would have to leverage. I then also went through and talked about how basically I just put all the code necessary to get my access token in a little Python module. So um, again, just to reiterate, I will be putting that in the file that I upload to GitHub. So again, you don't have to necessarily use this library. I'll have an extra set of code where you can just use that one and you just need to pr provide your password, your client ID and your account number and it should return the access token. So <clears throat> hopefully that works for everybody. And then we only defined a function. This is just more uh, for us to get things, to basically get the information we need uh, in order to use the first endpoint where we need to basically get some information about our account. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna be going to uh, the get user principles endpoint. This contains information that we need in order to log in to the streaming data API. More importantly, you will see things saw it here somewhere uh, it's probably up at the top <clears throat> you have access level login time token expiration time user ID authentication token um, and then they also have I know it's somewhere but basically there's a URL so there's also a URL that will take you to that particular um, web socket so you need that information in order to get the web socket naturally so that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to get the information we need in order to access the WebSocket. So first things first, we need to define our endpoint. So define our endpoint, which is the user principles endpoint. Okay, and so we'll call our variable endpoint. It's going to be HTTPS it's going to be colon forward slash forward slash api dot td ameritrade dot com we are going to use version one and it's going to be user principles already then from here we are going to need some headers this is very important because this particular endpoint does require an access token so that's what i got here that was in the first part that is my access token we can create a dictionary, which will have a keyword called authorization. This will be the authorization key. And then we pass through uh, what we say bearer. And then we're going to do space brackets. And then we're going to do format access token. So all that's going to do is it's basically just a little placeholder and it will plop my access token right in there. So very important that you do this step. And I'm going to double check authorization. Perfect. It looks like it's spelled correctly because if it's not spelled correctly, obviously it's not going to work. We need to define some parameters about this endpoint. So define the parameters for the endpoint. There are a couple. You will see stream, streamer subscription keys, streamer connection info, preferences, and surrogate IDs. Really, you just need this little component down here. So make your life easier. Just copy it. And what you can do here is we're going to define a new variable. It's going to be called parameters. The only parameter we have is called fields. And what we want assigned to that parameter is streamer subscription keys and streamer connection info. Keep in mind, there is a comma separating both parameters. So there's only one field that you have to populate. But if you want to get multiple pieces of information back, you have to separate both components by a comma. Okay, so we have all the information we need in order to make our request. So we're gonna make a request. And so we're gonna say content equals request. So the request library we loaded above, it's a get method. The URL will simply be our endpoint. The parameters will simply be our parameters and the headers will simply be the headers that we defined up above. So we have some information that was sent back to us. It will be a JSON string. We need to convert that into a Python dictionary because then we can easily parse it. So we're gonna take that content and we're gonna call the JSON method and then this will convert it into a JSON string. 
and its user principles response, just so I don't make any mistakes later. Okay, and so let's just see if we got the information back. Perfect. So it looks like it's good. I'm happy. And what we're going to do next is we're going to get the different components of that particular uh, content. And so if you look here, there's some stuff in here. Uh, we need the account ID. We need the token, which goes in the streamer info, if I remember correctly. Accounts, accounts, accounts. Yeah, I think it's up here at the top. So it would be token. So that's in the streamer info. We need the company, which is going to be in accounts. Company, segment, we're going to need segment. We're going to need account CD domain, which is in accounts. We're going to need the user group, which is in the streamer info. So right here, we're going to need the access level. Uh, there's authorize that we're going to need that. We're just going to type that in manually. And then there's timestamps. So that's going to be taking one of these timestamps. I think it's this one, if I remember correctly. No, it's token timestamp. It's this one. So we're going to have to take that one. That's when we have to do all that crazy conversion because why make things easy? And then we're going to also need the app ID and the ACL. So these are just the different pieces of information we need in order to make this request. So it's a pretty big I would call it dictionary, but um, it has all the information we need in order to make that next request. So uh, define the items we need in order to make a request to log in. Okay, so we're going to define our credentials. That will equal a bunch of information. The first one will be user ID. That will be this guy right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, go to that one, go to accounts, go to the first account, because some people might have multiple accounts. I know I do. And then get the account ID for that particular account. So that's the first one. Uh, obviously, it could change a little bit depending on how your account is set up. I'm sure if people have, you know, like more advanced accounts and stuff like that, you might have access to different endpoints than maybe what I might have access to. I don't have that much, <laughs> enough to justify it. And then the second one is going to be the token. That lives in our streamer info, so that's fine. And then this one, instead of being uh, an account, there's actually just only one component, and then that's going to actually be our token. And you do want to make sure you spell it correctly. Okay, what's the next one? Well, the next one is going to be the company. So we'll say company... And then with this one, I'm going to grab this guy right here. And what I'm going to do is just change it a little bit. We're going to say company. And the next one, what's the next one? Segments. That one also lives in the accounts. So that will be segments. I'm going to, no, that's fine. I was going to zoom it in a little bit, but I think that's fine. So that's segments. The second one is CDD domain. Lots of Ds. Oh, too many. And then with this one, it's still the accounts, but this one's going to be account CD domain. And it is a capital C, just so you're aware. The next one is user group. That lives in the streamer info, though. Okay, and then with this one, you want user group. Uh, what's the next one? Access level. And that is a lowercase. And then this one also lives in the streamer info and that will be access level okay and then the next one is kind of a tricky one that one confused me a little bit because i thought it existed in there but apparently we just type it in manually we say authorize is yes how did i know that well 
if you go here, this is basically what they want the credentials to look like when you make your login request. And authorize was already pre-populated, so I went along with that and it seemed to work fine. It doesn't look like it actually exists anywhere in the actual user principle. Okay, so this becomes the next fun one. And so I'm gonna kind of just populate it for right now, but I'm gonna go back up top and then uh, explain how to get this all working. I'd rather just set up my dictionary first and then timestamp as ms. Keep in mind, I do have it as an integer. App ID. Okay, that one. What is that one again? That is in streamer info. And then this one will be the app ID, but it is capital I. And then finally, we have ACL. And then this one will be again in streamer info, but this is going to be the ACL. So a lot of information, definitely a lot of parameters you have to pass through. So you want to make sure things are spelt correctly. If you're not able to make the request, double check the spelling. I screwed it up like three times when I first did. It was driving me crazy. Um, but that should be everything you need. And then let's talk about this guy right here. So this is the part that's a little bit not confusing, but you want to make sure you do it right. Okay. So grab the timestamp and convert it to milliseconds. It does expect it to be in milliseconds. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab that timestamp. We'll store it in a variable. And so that will be actually in the user principles response, streamer info. But now it's going to be token capital T timestamp. So we've grabbed the timestamp. We need to convert that timestamp into something that we can actually parse. And so right now it's just a string. We need to convert it into a date time. So we'll create a new variable. We'll call it date. We're going to take that date utility library and then the parser object. And then we're going to call the parse method. I'm going to pass through my token timestamp. And then if you actually look at that token timestamp, oh, I wish I had an example of it. Uh, basically, there's a time, uh, there's a time zone, sorry, time zone component. So that initially kind of caused some headaches for me when I was parsing it. <laughs> you want to make sure that you ignore the time zone. So what I say is ignore time zones. So it's ignore TZ. Just set that equal to true. And what I'll do actually, just so you guys can see it, because I, I really want to make sure people see it before they start like. So this is the thing right here. So there's all this like extra stuff down here. We don't need that. And so what this is going to do is it's going to convert it into something that we can actually work with. So if I do this, now it's a date time object. That's great. That's what I want it to be. But unfortunately, it's not in milliseconds. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say token timestamp as milliseconds equals the Unix time millis. And then I'm going to pass through my date. And then just to show you what it looks like when it comes out, it's going to look like this. Did I not do something right? Oh, I know probably what it is. I'm just going to do this one again. I'm just going to copy this and um, I'll put it down here. It gets picky sometimes. OK, perfect. I hate the date time library, to be honest, because sometimes this one still doesn't work and it always confuses me. So I'll, you always see me. I'll always import both because I'm like always confused. I'm like, why? Why is that one not working? Um, so it looks like for the function, you need date time. So what it does is converts it into milliseconds, but you'll notice it's a float. You don't want it as a float. And so basically, well, I guess maybe if you did it like that, that nah, still leaves it as a float. Um, what it will do is you just want to make sure you convert it to an integer because the endpoint does expect it to not be a float. So if you put it as an int here, it should be fine. And then once you have all this information, you can now technically move on to the second component. But I'm going to cut it off at this point in the video just because it's kind of getting a little bit long. And then the next component is even longer. Well, it's not super long, but it's going to take a little bit. 
Um, so if you have any questions about just getting everything set up, like, okay, I've got my access token and, and now I need to make that first request, please, as always, put them down in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. In the next video, what are we gonna be doing? Well, we're gonna be defining our login request. We're gonna be building a data request. So we're gonna basically build a couple of requests that gets us some information about our particular endpoint. And then I'll probably cut it off. I might go to the next video. I might go to the next content, but it's the third video. No, the fourth video that things are gonna get definitely different. So we're gonna have to work with a WebSocket and we're gonna have to define a bunch of different stuff. So bear with me, it will come but uh, that's gonna probably be the fourth video. So thanks again for watching everybody. Any questions, as always, put them down. We'll see you in video number three.